right. Daniel Carcillo joins us once again. He's the new CEO of Wasana Health, which is going public next month. Uh, we had a great conversation earlier this week, understanding what your journey is with the state of like, obviously the industry is in right now. Um, a lot of great feedback that we experienced. I also wanted to touch on the business side. Uh, in January, you were able to raise $4 million led by the Conscious Fund and Ambra Capita. Last week, our very own Amanda Siebert from TDR reported that Wasana plans on going public, as I said, in mid-April. So as you look to go public, what's the narrative and strategy that you will want to make to differentiate yourself from other companies within the space? So, yeah, we're looking at <clears throat> uh, loading and maintenance or microdoses of psilocybin to treat TBI and TBI related symptomology, TBI is traumatic brain injury, yeah. um, as well as post concussion syndrome. So um, that's a list of about 20 to 30 symptoms that include, you know, light sensitivity, slurred speech, headache, head pressure, um, insomnia, memory issues, uh, impulse control issues, anxiety, depression, suicidal ideation. Okay. So from that standpoint, uh, I think that we're very differentiated um, with the indications that we're looking at. I think what else differentiates us is that we're going through Health Canada and um, the FDA process as far yeah. as uh, IND um, indication for TBI related symptomology. And then you're talking to a CEO that's experienced this healing power of this mm. medicine for the last 20 months. And I've collected extensive data on myself that we'll be taking into trial to help better inform us. There's no CEO in this space that knows the brain health world like I do. And we're going to be adding pieces of the puzzle to our business that will help enhance not only TBI survivors, but overall mental health survivors and brain health survivors. So um, you know, What's we're, we're building like so far, both from a personal and from, you know, a business opportunity as well. Yeah, it's been, it's been really great. You know, yeah. um, I haven't had, you know, too much time to be on social media and, um, Probably you know, kind of, it's a great thing, man. Yeah. To be off of, um, Twitter and, and, uh, yeah, it's just, just hyper-focused on the mission and the response from family and friends has been really great. And then. Again, like another thing that differentiates me from other CEOs is I've started in advocacy. So I started like in concussion advocacy six and a half years ago, right? And then I found this recovery 20 months ago. So right. I have the, the best outlook on how to try to implement these new things that I talk about um, with the right people. So again, you don't necessarily go to a pro sports league to try to implement a better baseline diagnostic um, program, you you go to youth leagues, right? right? And you go and you do that with insurers and you do that with big healthcare systems like Mount Sinai behind you um, and like some of the existing relationships that we have with with some of our board members uh, who we're really looking forward to yeah. announce. It sucks that I can't uh, say too much, but- um, No, that's fine, but I yeah, can't people, help it. Yeah, I can't help but think like your name with your experience, but the amount of data and research that you've taken personally for yourself and an understanding of it all. Um, I would think without having to name names, because you obviously have to keep that confidential right now, but does it give you the ability based on your journey to get access to people that maybe other companies in the space cannot? 100%. Yeah, especially because again, uh, coming from the advocacy world. So on the psychedelic side, I, the first thing I did was um, looked at the space and then who can I trust? And so that's why I reached out to MAPS and Rick Doblin. And that's where I met our now COO, Don McCullough, yep. who's the, the board chair of MAPS Public Benefit Corporation. And, and she's also has over 27 years of global clinical development experience with companies like Novartis and Biogen. So, mm -hmm. you know, one of the biggest things about me and my company and me personally is I know how to play within a championship team. I'm not Jonathan Tapes though, right? <laughs> so I know yeah. exactly what my shortcomings are and I just surround myself with the best people who are the most ethical. That's really important. And we're seeing, you know, the psychedelic space and this new renaissance and people, this land grab for patents and all of these these, you know, not so pretty things. Um, right. You can expect them. I expected them. You're going to have people and organizations doing that. That was a really big motivator for me to make the decision to become public because I wanted to stay private and move stealthily and, and 
still be yeah. really, really, you know, powerful uh, in doing that. But then I saw what was going on. And just for the fact of like destigmatizing these medicines and continuing the awareness with TBI, with the professional alliance that we're creating, not only with professional sports leagues, but the VA, DOD, DARPA, um, veterans who are the biggest TBI or one of the biggest TBI communities, right? I think, you know, that's also another advantage where I think there's this misnomer that I only want to help athletes and it couldn't be further from the truth. I want to highlight athletic stories, use the press because the press only writes about us and then um, get, the, you know, the attention on these communities that, um, you know, professional sports leagues that I played in. So I feel right. personally responsible that we set these communities back big time, you know, mm -hmm. because we don't want endpoints, you know, because right. we want the athlete back out there um, six days after. So, you know, I think that's um, a really important distinction to know yeah. about our companies that we're going to help veteran communities. We're going to help women of domestic violence for every one NFL concussion. There's 7,000 amongst them. Good for and you. then we're going to help the older age population that suffer from falls and car accidents and, um, and we're going to use and leverage, you know, the athlete stories and the retreats and then their money as well. You know, we're going to subsidize treatments for these other communities and Great. work with healthcare systems and insurance companies to implement different levels and tiers of um, the baseline and diagnostic program that I'm speaking of, you know. So, again, it goes back to that early conversation, right? Um, you can't get help if you don't think anything's wrong. Yeah. Right? Well, so. One thing I am learning about this space is like, look, there is a business side to it as well. People are interested in investing in the space. They see tremendous growth opportunity. However, trust, trust is a big, big thing. And there are, I know that, you know, what we're learning, there are certain companies that are a little suspect within the industry. And, you know, we want to obviously name who they are, but at the same time too, the trust is like making sure that we're actually giving back to what people need right now. And let's face it, we are in a time where suicide is actually one of the leading causes of death, both in America and Canada. And for that matter, as much as 15 to 20% of the world has been diagnosed with depression. So, um, do you believe and agree with that? I would assume that you do. And, um, I would still, again, think that, you know, when you when you look at somebody who's the face and the CEO of a company and has gone through all this, um, it's really going to make you uh, open up avenues and inroads, you know, throughout, you know, your company expanding, knowing the experience and um, kind of the journey that you've been on. Yeah, I think I think that helps. I think trust is a really big thing in this industry, you know, especially in the public eye. Who can you trust? You know, who can you trust to shepherd this medicine the right way forward through FDA, Health Canada, um, you know, EA or EU trials. And, you know, I think that we can be that person um, and that company that, you know, hopefully these people from like the decrim movements and, um, and indigenous communities, they can see that I work with Chakruna, I work with decrim. Right. I work with Dr. Bronner's, I work with maps, you know, like, I know that there's this notion that it has to be one or the other. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't subscribe to that at all. You know, there's going to be different access for different people. And if you don't think that, you know, people should have a key to their own consciousness, well, then there's an issue with that, you right. know, so, um, but also in saying that, there needs to be a medical model for sure. You know, people are going to get diagnosed. And if this is a medicine that can promote neurogenesis and that can stimulate regions of our brain that are shut down due to emotional or physical trauma and turn them back on and then help us um, peel back the layers or deregulate from our programming where we view the world in these, in these very defined structured ways that some of them aren't serving us anymore and it can help change all of those things, you know? So I think that, um, you know, it's a really exciting time yeah. and the mental health space to your point is there's an issue, right? Like we, you can see now how like connected we have to be as individuals to live a happy, fulfilling life because isolation doesn't work, you know? Yeah. Well, this has been great. Uh, last thing I want to leave you uh, ask you is you had mentioned access. Health Canada uh, is considering expanding its special access program to a, a wider group of people. Which, be mm -hmm. which we could be talking thousands 
uh, gaining access to this program. If this happens, what kind of direct impact do you think this will have on Wasana over, say, the next uh, 12 months or so? Uh, well, we're setting up our institute in Canada and in the United States. Um, we've, you know, submitted comments to the special access program. We're looking at section 56 exemptions for the high unmet patient and medical need of TBI in soldiers, yeah. athletes, and women of domestic violence in the older age population. So you can expect to see, um, us, uh, you know, trying to help collect as much data now as possible, um, under the, um, you know, legal framework and guise of health Canada, because we are running. Health Canada approved trials as well. So as long as, um, you know, that doesn't affect our outcome to be able to help as many people as possible, um, which, you know, that plan of these Health Canada approved FDA approved trials is really, really important to be able to execute on that. Um, then, yeah, we're going to look at every avenue because, again, like I'm a company and a person where it's like, yes, I've made this decision. Right. Um, and, and we, but we have to, we have to continue to try to help, you know, we can't just sit by idly for three, four or five years as this pharmaceutical, that is not what we're doing. Right. Yeah. So we are a very different company in the sense of, um, we're going to be working on the, the whole of brain health. And, uh, that's, that's really exciting. What's, what's really exciting is like, TBI, it's neurological, it's physiological, and it's central nervous, right? You're all right. of these systems kind of get attacked. Yeah. And you have to figure out all of them. That's why it's so hard to find. You're never going to find one TBI endpoint. That's mm -hmm. why there aren't any, right? You have to look at all these five different systems. Well, guess what else you have to look at for your brain health? Same wow. stuff you look at TBI. So I've um, you know, found the most comprehensive picture of brain health. And uh, we can use it for for that reason as a tool, exciting. as a predictive tool. Yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. So that's really exciting. And that's being built. And uh, it'll be ready soon for people. So I apply yeah. what you're doing. You plan to go yeah, public uh, next month, you said? Yeah. So next month, uh, I believe it's the window they gave us is the April 10th to the 30th. Um, and uh, yeah, we did a big, you know, pre IPO round. Um, so that's really exciting. So we're well capitalized. Um, to get through phase one and um, yeah, all of our work this year uh, to prove out patentability as well as, you know, get ready for, get our medical writing and our dossiers ready for the health Canada, the yeah. PCTA meeting with them and, and the pre IND meeting with the FDA is on timeline, uh, functional animal studies on timeline. And um, yeah, just, you know, really excited. We have a big retrospective study coming up. So people um, will be announcing that soon. Um, and it'll be over 200 people if you've ever suffered from any TBI or TBI related symptomology, you can enter into it. Um, if you've used, uh, any one, four combinations of psilocybin in a loading dose, big dose, psilocybin in a microdose, uh, CBD or any type of functional mushrooms. So, uh, keep you posted on that. Yeah. Well, listen, uh, this has been great last, uh, over this course this week, uh, talking to you and getting to know your story personally more and as well as the business model and, uh, some exciting things, obviously to say for you personally, Wasana health and going public next month. We appreciate your time catching up with us. Thanks, man. All right. Appreciate you having me on. Thanks, Daniel.